No, hello. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, no, we we have to cancel. We have to cancel the role playing session tonight. Yeah. Um, no, I'm I'm awfully sick. <coughs> you see, I'm I've got this. I've I've got um I've got um I've got a a, a disease, a very contagious. No, you shouldn't come over at all. No. So we're probably going to have to role play next week. Yeah. No, absolutely. No next week. But squash tomorrow. Yeah. Perfect. Now I see. Oh. Um. No, I should be better by then. It's they. It's like a twenty four hour, uh, bug thing. Yeah. No good. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Bye bye. Hello and welcome to this week's episode of the Campaign Creator. It's Adventure One Time! Oh my goodness! Panic, 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 panic! What are we going to do? Adventure One, we're not ready. We haven't spent 6,000 years planning our campaign. We don't know the name of the barkeeper's daughter in that little tavern in the backwater city that the characters are never likely to come across. Oh, just breathe, just breathe, just breathe, just breathe. We're talking Adventure 1. My name is Guy, and today's episode is sponsored by World Anvil. Uh, we love World Anvil. World Anvil uh, loves us. That's why they create all of this wonderful, wonderful stuff, which you can access free, by the way. You can access all of this stuff free. So go and have a look at World Anvil. We're going to be using World Anvil a little bit later on to plot out Adventure 1. Now, when we talk Adventure 1, we talk all kinds of things. What do we What do? we do? Where do we start? How do we even plan for this? What are we going to do? I don't know what to do. There's so much to think about. My brain's going to explode. It doesn't have to. We're going to talk about small versus big. We're going to talk about NPC focused. And we're going to talk about setup. Adventure 1 is an opportunity for your players to climb into the saddle, but not for them to take the reins. Not yet. Not yet. So, small versus big. You need to decide, are you starting with an intimate, an intimate opening, or a massive opening? Is this the beginning of a grand space opera? Are you having the Star Destroyer fly overhead and continue to fly and continue to fly and continue to fly and continue to fly, continue to fly showing us just how big you are? Or is it an intimate, close experience? where we learn about a nuanced, subtle, personal development. Something that lures us into a false sense of security before we <coughs> snap the neck. <laughs> Scale is important. Scale is important because it's going to set a whole bunch of stuff. All of this is going, all of this, all adventure ones are setting the tone for your campaign. So you want to make sure that you do it right. And there's lots of videos that I have done elsewhere on how to run an adventure one and what to look for. So this is a very quick way of looking at it. So intimate versus massive. Intimate doesn't necessarily mean that one has to be in the bedroom for this to start, although that would be interesting. And there have been many ways in which films and books have started in that kind of space. But that's not what we're talking about. Intimate means on a small scale. So are the characters, are the PCs all in one small space struggling to survive, to overcome some kind of joint malady? Or is it a massive battle where the PCs are insignificant and will later rise to significance so that's what we have to look at is we have to decide upon that once you've decided upon that you then need to decide on the scale of the adventure is this going to be killing rats in the basement of the innkeeper or is this going to be slaying thousands of goblins in a spectacularly large battle Again, it's entirely up to you. But when you look at your campaign planner, remember the planner that we worked out, all the big steps, and we go, right, well, they're going to be saving the kingdom of Etherios from the invading forces of that evil, evil woman. And there's going to be griffin battles and there's going to be all kinds of really cool stuff. That is an epic conclusion. We might want to start our adventure, our very first adventure, in the exact opposite space. We might want to start it where our heroes are perhaps all in the arms of their loved ones. And it's a simple little affair. My lord, the wolves are attacking the sheep again and the peasants, well, they can't do much. Would you have a look? So it's a simple, idyllic life, and our PCs go to explore the wolves. They kill the wolves because the wolves are low level, as the PCs are. And then they see smoke on the horizon. The villa that contained their loved ones is on fire. 
That evil, evil woman has launched her assault, and that villa was the first to fall. Because we need to incorporate our PCs. Remember, this is Adventure 1. We need to start introducing them to the plot, to the villain. We need to do all of that sort of stuff. So if we start small, we can then go big later on. Or perhaps we start with a large battle where our heroes are children. And they're watching it from the sidelines. And occasionally, one of them has to use a stick to fend off a wounded soldier who tries to attack them. However you want to play it out. So the scale of the adventure could be small or it could be big. They get taken slaves on adventure one and they get taken to the other side of the world. That promises grand adventure, grand scale. So that's very important to consider. And I have done a video on six different ways to start your campaign. I'm not going to go through all of them now because that's not what the purpose of today's video is. So once you've decided how are you starting this and on what scale are you starting this and whether it's an intimate or a massive opening, you have a very good foundation from which to start. So let's say we're going to start with that intimate idea. Our PCs are all starting in the arms of their loved ones. Now that's a little bit, a bit risque. Oh, showing a little bit of a uh, little bit risk there. Oh, naughty. Yes, it is. But on the other hand, it does fit within the tropes that have been established for the sort of Greco-Roman period. Gladiator started, okay, he started with a massive battle because there weren't any more massive battles after that. Remember, it got smaller and smaller and smaller until it was just him versus the emperor. It was the exact opposite of what one would be doing if you started with an intimate and you ended up with a massive. So we start our adventure. Okay, great. We now bring in NPCs. Why do we bring in NPCs so early on? Well, remember, NPCs are going to be giving us a huge amount of support later on. They are the mouthpiece of the gods. They're the mouthpiece of you. So by bringing in NPCs early on in Adventure 1 that are going to be with the characters moving forward, it gives us a strong sense that NPCs are useful, are viable, and are not all evil. If you want to try and prevent murder hoboism, this is the way to do it. The young NPC, it is now the sheep herder. Oh, brave, brave sirs. I saw the destruction of your family. I pledge my life. You were saving my flock, and this is what has happened as a result. I will be your squire until the day I die or until the day you release me from my bond. The PCs might also automatically go, you are released, boy. Go back to your flock. We have revenge. In which case, the NPC will impress upon them. No, I must return your favor at least, otherwise the gods will damn me and my family. I have no recourse but to serve you. That NPC now becomes their doer of minor, middlesome, meddlesome stuff. The NPC will go off and sort out food and set up camp and do all of that stuff that you don't necessarily want your players to get bogged down in. It also gives you a huge amount of role-playing opportunity because you are controlling the NPCs. You are controlling the information that the PCs are getting, which means that the PCs are in a reactionary state. One of the biggest foibles that happens as a GM is by allowing the PCs to take charge in Adventure 1. It means that they start to direct where the story goes. They start to look for plot themselves. And when they fail to find it, they start to create it themselves. All of your planning, all of your campaign work has now been for naught. Now, you might sit back and say, oh, but all of my campaign planning means that my players can go wherever they like and they will encounter all kinds of stories and plots and things. Yes, they will, but then you're not building an epic campaign. You are building an episodic serial. There's nothing wrong with that. But your master plot is no longer in your control, which as far as this channel is concerned, that's what a great GM is all about, is weaving together the players' actions, the players' stories into a bigger collective story, conducting this massive role play into something that at the end of it makes complete sense. So we want the players to be reactionary. We want them to be on the back foot. They don't know all the information. They don't know roughly where to go or what to do. And we're going to use our NPCs to get them to go where we want them to because it allows us to then control the pacing of the game and to entrench that not all NPCs are evil and shouldn't all be killed on site instantaneously. That's important. So now we go into our setup and it's very, 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 in, uh, very easy. We have a punctuated plot, which means 
that we have established that the situation has changed. We've got our PCs out of their comfort zone. We've burnt down their villa. They are now moving forward. They have no recourse to stay behind. If the army that burnt the villa down is still there and it's thousands and thousands of these warriors, they have to retreat. Where they're going to retreat to, that's where our NPCs are going to remind them. So our plot has now gone. We've hit target number one. Introduction of the enemy. The info dump can be quite easily facilitated by an NPC who goes, The ships arrived this morning under the cover of the fog. No one saw them, and they have already overrun Massilia. We are doomed. Doomed, I tell you. Flee. There we go. The NPC has given them a whole bunch of information and pushed the plot forward. Now, of course, the other thing is that you're testing your players. You're looking in Adventure 1 to see, are they sticking to the plan that they had in Session 0? Have they gone away from Session 0 and gone, you know what, didn't like anything on that, I have thrown it all out the window. Are they also sticking to their characters' backstories and, in theory, to their characters' alignments or their character types, their personality types, again, as spoken about on this channel, are they sticking to those spaces or are they simply playing the usual character they normally play? Why is this important? This is Adventure 1. We are starting our campaign. You need to adjust and adapt because you planned around Session 0. Now they've changed the game, you need to up and change your game as well. So those are the things that we need to look at when we start to look at our adventure. Again, World Anvil, of course, comes to our rescue in terms of their layout. So let's just jump over there. I'm on the World Anvil website, and here we have our usual interface, and I'm going to go to Plot. The plot tab and in the plot tab I'm then going to scroll down and I'm going to say that we're creating an adventure now if you look here this is the RPG campaign and adventure plots the great GM style so it is as of this channel I mean that's that they made it for us so the adventure when I click on that look at it now it gives us a whole bunch of stuff so the objective the objective is to move the players from their home base out into the world the theme could be loss, or it could be the invasion of war. The type, there are four types of adventures. Is it thwarting, delivering, dis collecting, or discovering? In this case, it's discovering. It's discovering we've been invaded. Where must we go? We must discover where we... So there's lots of discovering going on. They're not trying to defeat the army now. They're not delivering anything. They're not collecting. You could say that they're delivering a message that they've been invaded. But at the moment, it's about discovering the space that they're in and where they're going. What is our focus? Is it master plot? Is it character or other? In this case, it is master plot. And then the main adversary type, it's a lowly wolf. It's a henchman. We're not facing off against the villain. We're not facing off against Nemesis in this particular instance. What do we expect from fighting wolves? Well, again, I'm not going to go through this whole template. There are videos that do specifically that. But this template is designed to allow you to create Adventure 1 to fill in the details as you are prompted. So you literally have your entire game plan. And because you can choose your particular um, setting and, and um, whether you're using 5th edition or something else, there, all of those options are in here. And then you can add in those stat details into the actual body of the work. You can literally type in character and monster stat blocks. You can go and make Make monster stat blocks as well when you um, sign up and you can access all that kind of stuff. So you are not left high and dry in terms of coming up with this adventure on your own. There is so much support that you can get from World Anvil and then from going through this video deciding small versus big, NPC focused and then setting it up. Adventure 1 is daunting for a lot of new GMs, and for old GMs it's something that you must pay particular effect, uh, attention to, as it is going to determine the entire feel of your game moving forward. You don't want it to be mundane, you don't want it to be too boring, you want to get the PCs in there, so that's why. Go back through this video, look, intimate, intimate beginnings are personal beginnings, massive beginnings are set pieces, which sets the stage. Consider those two things when you look at it. Finally, for those of you that have stayed until the very end of the video, my last thoughts on your Adventure 1. When you are running this, there are some suggestions that you can start with something else, some other story, uh, a prologue, if you like. That's entirely possible, and it should be explored. Your ultimate goal with an Adventure 1 situation, aside from setting the tone and from establishing within the players' minds the kind of game that they're going to be playing, 
your adventure one is you presenting your world to your players. So if there is a single adventure that you're going to spend more time on than any other, this is it. But don't stress. Adventure one isn't likely to play out in the space in which you allocate it. It will either play out shorter or it will play out longer. The player is going to go and hunt down those wolves in the caves and then come back to find their loved ones dead. That could play out in the space of an hour. It could play out in the space of three hours. If you're playing for longer than that, then you might find that you've actually ended Adventure 1 and are now starting to move into Adventure 2, depending on how you classify your adventures. But that's how I like to, to classify them. If the players achieve the goal, the adventure is over. If they fail the goal, the adventure is over as well. Move on to the next adventure. So with this... In your time span that you are playing, prepare yourself and pace yourself. And there's videos on pacing, how you can extend to add more meat to it. What's causing the wolves to attack the sheep? You can unpack that a little bit. Try and build in some hints that, oh, there's mercenaries from the ships that arrived a few days earlier and they took up in the little forest nearby. And that forest, that is now driving the wolves out of the forest, and that's what's causing them to attack the sheep. So the players can now go and discover the bandits in the forest. Ah, oh, why are there bandits here? They have strange markings from lands that we don't yet know. What is this all about? And then they see the fires happening. So don't be afraid to plan it, but then to have more available or to make up more on the fly. You know where you're going. You've got your master plot. You've got your objectives, thanks to World Anvil, in terms of what this mission, what this adventure should achieve. How you play that out is entirely up to you. And you can take a lot of pressure off of yourself by realizing that you can fix adventures as they're going. You can fix adventures as they're going. There was a video released or will be released. I just, I don't know the timings called running an improvised game, completely in improvised. And it talks about how you can do that. So look out for those things. Don't put yourself under so much pressure. Anyway, until next time, as they say on World Anvil, light up the forge.